All right, what is going on everyone? So in this video, I wanna share with you guys the top seven things that I wish I knew when I started lifting, because if someone had just told me these things, I would have either gotten results a lot faster or would have saved a lot of time or wasted energy. Now, for the record, I started lifting when I was 15 years old. I'm 28 now, so that's 13 years in the gym. So I'm gonna overlay some clips from my latest upper body workout as I go through the tips here. And before we get started, I do wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and I'll have a little bit more about that at the end. Okay, so the first thing I wish someone had told me early on is that I shouldn't let others influence my own training so easily. I see this manifest in a few ways in new lifters, and I'd say it's most common in young lifters. Probably the most dangerous form of this is lifting to impress your friends or other people in the gym. Usually this results in loading on more weight than you can handle with good form, and so you end up doing things like not squatting to full depth, not touching the bar to your chest on the bench press, or having your spotter curl the weight up for you. And trust me, as an experienced lifter, I can say that no one really cares how much weight you can move if it's not done with good form. And personally, when I see a new lifter in the gym, I'm way, way more impressed if they have a really nice technique than if they're just throwing a bunch of weight around. So even though it can be very frustrating to see people getting stronger than you, faster than you, I think it's important to keep in mind that ideally this is gonna be a lifelong journey for you and the downside of encoding bad lifting habits early on that then need to be unprogrammed down the road is far worse than just having your buddies getting slightly ahead of you in the beginning. Now I also see this take form as basically just copying exactly what it is your favorite bodybuilder or influencer is doing. I actually fell for this one pretty hard early on in my career. Whoever was the biggest and strongest guy at my gym, I just take everything he said and run with it. And if I wasn't so easily influenced by others, I might've been able to find out what works better for me through a combination of self-experimentation and healthy skepticism. Number two is that building muscle and losing fat is actually pretty simple. I think a lot of YouTubers and influencers sometimes make the process sound much more complicated than it actually is. And because you have so many different influencers doing so many different things, it can be difficult to figure out what it is that actually matters. You've got all this stuff at the very tip of the iceberg being thrown at you all the time. So it's hard to decipher what it is that's actually driving progress. So I had someone tweet me saying that if you can't explain it in a single tweet, so in 280 characters, then you probably don't understand it. Uh, so here's what I said in response. You wanna lift weights with good form, mostly in the six to 12 rep range. Now that doesn't mean only in the six to 12 rep range. Uh, mostly with compound movements, be consistent, train hard, have fun, eat enough protein, be in a caloric surplus to gain size faster, and in a caloric deficit to lose fat. Now I would probably add progressive overload to that, which is kind of captured in the be consistent and train hard part, uh, but it is important that you're not only consistently showing up to the gym, but also consistently progressing with what you're doing. I covered this in detail in my fundamental series, which I'll put a link to down below. Uh, but the bottom line is that while it can be fun to try out different workouts and use fancy training techniques, and in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with doing that, it's important to keep in mind these main things that are driving the majority of your progress forward, especially as a beginner. The third thing I wish I realized is just how much genetics matter. And when I say this, a lot of people get discouraged because they assume maybe they don't have the best genetics for building muscle, and so there's no real point in even trying. Uh, but that isn't the case. It simply means that, like almost anything, we're not all starting on an even playing field, which means you should only compare your current physique to your starting place and not anyone else's current physique. So you can use other people as motivation, but it's important to recognize that even if you copy exactly what your favorite bodybuilder or influencer does, it's still possible that you'll never attain their level of physique development because of differences in genetics, and also the fact that these social media platforms tend to select for the genetically elite anyway, setting an unrealistic standard for most people. So I wanna look at this study from Hubal and colleagues, which had subjects train their biceps and triceps for 12 weeks. And you can see here from the graph that despite everyone being on the exact same training program, there was a huge range of muscle growth that the subjects saw. The best responder gained 59% and a few people actually lost muscle. Maybe that was due to overtraining or poor nutrition. Another point is that all these subjects ran the exact same program so maybe that implies that maybe a subject toward the bottom end just didn't respond well to that style of training, not that they were a non-responder to any style of training. So this is why it's important to self-experiment 
and try different training styles to figure out what best fits your needs. However, this doesn't also mean that you should always be hopping around from program to program. You need to give it time to see if it actually works. And in a blog post on genetics, Greg Knuckles argued, you need to train consistently for at least four months before you can have a reasonable idea of how well you respond to a particular training program. And if you don't put in at least a year of consistent, challenging training with a good attitude, you probably aren't justified in confidently claiming that you have bad genetics for lifting. Also quickly on the topic of genetics, while you can make a muscle bigger or smaller, and that can kind of change how your body shape looks, you can't really change the shape of a muscle itself much. So things like ab symmetry and bicep insertion distance from the elbow can't be modified with training. Um, so don't be fooled by people who claim to have some special trick for this. Okay, the fourth thing I wish I knew when I started is that your physique is gonna look very different based on lighting, your level of pump, the time of the day, etc. I remember when I first started lifting, I'd look at my physique in my bathroom, and then I'd go and look at my physique in my bedroom and notice that they looked very different. In the bathroom, I'd look much more muscular. In my bedroom, I'd look much less muscular. Now, from my perspective today, it's obvious that it was just a difference in lighting, um, but I think the lesson here is that you shouldn't judge your progress on an hour-to-hour -hour basis or even a day-to-day -day basis because you may actually find that discouraging or destabilizing. I think the key is to gauge your progress over a longer time scale and use more objective means to track your progress. So you can take progress once or twice a month, use average body weight trends, and most importantly, make sure you're getting progressively stronger in the gym. And these things are gonna be a much better indicator of whether or not you're making progress than just constantly checking yourself in a mirror. So kind of piggybacking off the last one, I think being very analytical about your training and nutrition as a beginner is a very good thing for driving progress. So you should have some kind of workout logbook or app where you track your weights and reps from week to week. And I also think that tracking macros or at least tracking your food intake is the best way to know exactly what you're putting in your body and how you can regulate that to best suit your goals. And following a meal plan also can work fine as long as the macros are well suited to your needs. But I prefer to set up a more flexible approach for beginners so you don't become a slave to that particular meal plan and you'll be able to be more flexible with your approach over time as your goals and needs change. Um, and eventually you'll be able to understand your body and its nutritional needs so that you don't really need to track or follow a set nutritional plan at all anymore. Now, of course, this doesn't imply that you need to track every single set that you ever do or every single bite that you ever eat, uh, but having a log of what you're doing for future reference and to see if you're making progress is extremely valuable, even if there is some ballpark estimation to the specific numbers. Okay, so number six is that you don't need steroids to build an impressive physique. A lot of early lifters get so convinced that in order to build any muscle or have a lean physique at all, then you need to use steroids, and this simply isn't true. I'm not gonna go into any length or detail here, but I think steroid use, especially when you're still new to the gym, can set up a slippery slope for serious mental and physical health issues down the road, especially when you cycle off and lose most of the size you had put on, which can then perpetuate the problem over time. Um, so anyway, I talked about those issues in detail in a Steroid Science Explained video, which I'll have linked down below. And also I think there is something to be said for more or less maxing out your natural genetic potential first before even thinking about turning to steroids, because this way you're gonna be forced to learn how your body really works and how it responds to different training styles without having the magic of steroids in your corner from the outset. And the final thing I wish I'd been told when I started lifting is that when you're new to training, you are by far the most primed for growth. So during this time, you really wanna take advantage by getting serious about your training. It's common for me to see guys only hit chest and arms for their first year of training and then end up with an unbalanced, disproportionate physique that might then take another couple years of really hard leg and back training to balance back out. So while you're still in the newbie stage, you wanna be intelligent and thoughtful about how you're training because this is the time that you're probably gonna make the best gains of your life. And unfortunately, there isn't ever gonna be a time that you can get that newbie period back unless you completely detrain again. Now that isn't to say there's any real urgency to the journey here. If you don't get everything perfect during your newbie phase, that's fine. I don't think anyone ever actually does. And as long as you're consistent and balanced with your training over the coming years, things will eventually balance out as you near your natural genetic limitation anyway. Um, so all other information, I wanna direct you guys over to my fundamentals video series here on this channel, which covers all the basics you need to know as a new lifter. And then my Technique Tuesday series covers all the basic exercises you might wanna include in a training program. And if you're looking to make all this stuff more actionable in the gym, 
and I'd recommend checking out my Fundamentals Hypertrophy program, which was designed for people in their first couple years of training. And before we go, I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that I use to run jeffnippard.com. And I actually just finished redesigning my website layout over there. So I built in a new video loop that plays on the homepage and revamped all my program pages. So Squarespace has really aesthetic designer custom templates and 24 hour customer support. They'll use any time that I run into any issues and they make the entire process of running your own website really simple. Um, so if you're looking to get started with building your own website or your own online store, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered. And that's gonna save you 10% off your purchase of a website or a domain. Uh, so thanks again, guys, so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all here in the next one.